We made it. We've come now, baby. What are the next words? No idea. <laughs> Does anyone know? Scene one, take one, marker. What if by an act of God, Chris's slate literally had the next words already written on it? <gasps> Is it that we took the long road? I'd have to imprison him for like my own <laughs> studies. Fortune telling. <laughs> the next conspiracy video is about Chris. <clears throat> Good morning. Hey. Hi. It's fucking raining, so we're going to be a little gremlin-y. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Lizzie Gordon. <sighs> yeah, this is fucking wild. It's so hard to be a person in this gray it's haze. It's so hard to exist in L.A. where it's snowing. Girl, it is not snowing. These fucking news reporters. I know, like, okay, Northern California, Big Bear. Yeah, you're getting some snow. But yeah. these people that are reporting live from the Hollywood sign could eat my fucking dick. That was it, very was aggressive. It, but is it actually snowing? There was, like, a uh, little snow. bit of hail that turned into, like, a tiny bit of snow. And there was, like, the slightest covering on the ground. And the lady's like, it's really accumulating. And then <laughs> Shut she, up. <laughs> and then she's, like, trying to interview the people that are, like, walking up the street. And they're all tourists because they're just yeah. here to see the Hollywood sign. And they're like, I don't know. I don't live here. <laughs> and she's like, this is crazy, huh? And I just, I, it was so funny to see how over-dramatized it, it, the snow no was like the rain was wild i'm did not you gonna get, lie did you get the flash flood warnings oh. oh my gosh yes so i've gotten them multiple times here and it's like not raining you know <laughs> what i mean so sometimes i'm like uh, how do i gauge this like how do i gauge the danger of this flash flood it, it alert was, on and my it phone was so aggressive it's like stay in immediate place only leave if you're evacuating due to danger and it's like what right and i had a film festival to go to <laughs> so i went and I drove through fucking three feet of water to get onto the freeway. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. It was fucking terrifying. <laughs> I'm really uh, now can, scared can of you, hydroplaning. Can you just take that in? Do you know how much three feet is? Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Knee. No. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. That And I felt it with every fucking move my card made. And, and then pfft. immediately, no, it didn't go like that because it was so deep. I had to slow down. But if you stop, you stall out and your engine floods. So you're slow driving I'm through I'm slow driving water? through it, having a full-blown meltdown. What if you just started seeping into I the car? I didn't know what to do. Like, I was, I have my friend Mal and her husband in the back seat, And Oscar's just like, keep going, keep going. And I was like, <laughs> Like, literally, I haven't felt that kind of anxiety. And it's like, that kind of anxiety triggers gnarly laughter for me. So the toxic bitch inside is like, do this all the time. <laughs> Three feet is like enough to swim. Dude, it was terrifying. If you get on that stomach, you yeah. be paddling. We it could be playing Mermaid did that. And then my immediately, my check engine light went on. I was like, I guess that's it for the Prius. <laughs> <laughs> we got home because we were out filming and I have so many trees, tree branches, yeah. trees. Like there was a full blown tree that just fell in front of the exit gate. Like you couldn't exit the house because a full blown tree had fallen down. So dramatic. Branches everywhere. Chris was here. Chris we fell. Were filming. <laughs> we were filming for Shane's main channel. And uh, right when he like went to leave the garage, the biggest gust of wind ever happened. And we're like, maybe you should just stay the night because it was fucking crazy. Did you stay the night? No. no, no. He braved it. He braved it. He did braved you go to your home. apartment or did you go to Bakersfield? My apartment. There which... was no way you could have drove into Bakersfield. No, I, I actually don't think we could have. I think the the five was I five was closed. I think because like the grapevine. There's probably legit snow up there. Well, yeah. the five like fully flooded by Burbank. Yeah, and like, even, fully flooded like those cars. That was more than three feet. Even at my apartment, like when I got out of the car, I just like stepped into like a mini river. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it was, like my my up uh, until my ankles were uh, covered in water when I stepped out of my car in my parking lot. And now he's a prepared man with rain boots. Yeah. Super good enough as Chris enough. looks so good today. He's got these rain boots on that are so stylish. I'm like, yeah. mm, I need to get myself some of Damn. those. Thank Thank you. you know what? It, all I can think about is bread and butter. But <laughs> what? Uh, it's I don't think it's related. <laughs> Do wait, like actual bread and butter? Yeah, I can't stop thinking about it. I've been thinking about it since I woke up this morning. When it's freezing, that's just what you want. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. My weekend was horrible. Oh. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> no, like legit. I, as you would say, I was having menti bees for like a full blown like <laughs> many bees twenty hours. Why? Could not get out of the worst mood of my life. Was it validated, or were you just in a mood? <laughs> to me, it felt validated. Well, what was the cause? Like on Thursday, I snapped my back out of place. Oh, and you know, that's a bit. Us old girls, we cannot function with those snapbacks. <laughs> no. And I've learned. I was like, you snap your back, you go to the chiro- chiropractor. Yeah. I went right to the chiropractor because I was like, oh no, we're filming for Shane tomorrow i want to be able to move because it's at the point where like any movements like (gasps) oh god (gasps) and so i go to the chiropractor and i was like wow sometimes when i go to yoga towards the end of a back thing it like snaps me back into place and i feel as good as new yeah i don't think you're supposed to work out right after the chiropractor no so i went to a yoga class immediately after i went to the chiropractor i went to more of like a stretch one like a Mm -hmm. less intense workout but a more focused on stretching Mm -hmm. and i think i fucked it up even more and so all weekend long, I like have not been able to move. And I've just been like in a pissed off state because when your like body feels like that, the littlest of things just make you yeah. lose your mind. I get it. And that cat won't stop peeing on my beautiful rug. Oh my God. And I couldn't get the first piss stain out of the beautiful rug. I went to the store and I tried everything. I Googled and I tried all of the solutions. Hydrogen peroxy, di- peroxide. Dawn peroxide, Dawn dish soap baking soda i literally tried every concoction the internet recommends yeah nothing worked i tried the white distilled vinegar and then i tried every pet stain remover on the market and for some reason because my back was hurting so bad i was so hyper focused on it i couldn't let it go and i'm just sitting there like relentlessly scrubbing for hours and shane's like you've got to stop this is so toxic yeah let's just turn the rug around and so i finally convinced him to turn the rug around and there's a fucking pee stain on the other side of the rug that we must have already hidden once when we did this before Here's what can I? Uh, there's uh, there's a couple solutions I have for you. Okay, get a washable rug. Well, so that's what we're doing. We yeah. we took that rug out, and Shane's like, "That's it. We have five animals. We're gonna have kids. We're doing ruggable." Yeah. So we ordered a ruggable rug, and I'm done with these fucking bougie rugs. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Yeah. The other thing I want to say is, I read in the comment section on our podcast last week, you need like two or three litter boxes. So for I've taken action. Okay. I've given another litter box in the house. There's now two massive litter boxes louis is a hungry bitch so i've given him his own free feeding food station okay and everything's been a lot better i also ordered some spray that deters animals from peeing on rugs Mm because i still have some other rugs in the house but right when i sit down and like get over my fucking anger i look up and my whole blind and wall is drenched in water stop you and i'm like the world's really testing me because we yeah. just paid so much money to have the roof done yeah. and i guess they didn't cover one of the edges so now the rain was leaking through one of the edges of the roof and it's in the room with the really high ceiling yeah. so it's coming all the way down from the roof and all the way to the bottom you can do it's like it. 30 feet of fucking Fuck. drywall and then they're gaslighting me once they come out it was i spent my whole sunday fighting with this company they are coming out and now they're doing replacing the drywall but that's a whole nother week of hell of them mm. in inside of my house mm. and like the roof was exterior it was loud but it was whatever this is they're in the house and i have to put my five animals somewhere while they're in here redoing the drywall and getting all the fucking shit out of the wall and replacing it jesus can you take the five animals somewhere and just stay somewhere else maybe no, maybe i don't know throw them in the g-wag and take with them all somewhere. that i'm so blessed you know <laughs> yeah these are all like i no, i really do have to take a step back and be like even though these small things are frustrating in the moment like i'm so beyond blessed and it's yeah, like at least they're you can so fix it. they're so minuscule in the grand scheme of things and it's just like i need to take a step back i took a little bath i meditated yeah. and i was like you know what just live it's easy okay. brother just live easy nothing's gonna fuck with my peace today i said nothing's gonna fuck with my peace today I slipped in a massive pile of piss and hit the ground so hard that my toes bent backwards and nail polish was taken off and my toe over here started bleeding. Inside of your house? Yeah. Slipped in a puddle of piss. Joe had stepped in it, so he was like having a conniption. God damn it, my fuck! And in like my codependence, I was like, I can't have him being this mad in my space. I'm gonna just help him clean it up. So I'm like rushing to help shut this fucking 40 year old man up. And in like my haste to bring him his wet towelette, I slip in the initial piss pile. And it's like literally, it, I slipped so hard. I, the fucking nail polish flew off my toes. They're fucking bleeding. Oh I fucking busted my knee open. And then Joe's like, I got you in piss there. And I just went, shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. And then I started crying. 
but that threw my back out and i noticed that <laughs> this morning at orange theory <laughs> that my hips all fucked up because we are old like you pointed out and it traveled up my body <laughs> What is it about the rain? I seriously think the rain brings about demons in my life and you're so attached to my life that it like also haunts you. Dude, it was actually, this is actually so, I don't know if I told you this, but I realized recently like I get sympathy hangovers and I get sympathy rich. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> a couple people in my life has recently come into like huge money and it's like, I'm rich. It's like, no, the fuck you're not. Like, <laughs> Wait, how are they coming into huge amounts of money? A girlfriend of mine just got a $300,000 check for a settlement. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's and I pretty- noticed that like I did a lot of creeping on you this weekend because you like looked so cute going to a birthday party. Thank you. And I was like, damn. Oh, that's another friend. Yeah. I go to that party. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm loaded. It's and like so. Yeah. You like tagged her. So I looked at her Instagram because I was like, who's this woman that Lizzie's at her house? And I'm like looking at her house. I'm like, God damn, this woman's house Stunning. is gorgeous. Stunning. She did all that. Wow. Yeah, her house is so fucking inspired that I, f- I was like joking at the party. I was like, yeah, come see my minivan. It's decorated the same way. <laughs> <laughs> so what was this? You got all dressed up. Uh, it was her 40th birthday party. And uh, this this woman's like really fucking cool. Like uh, you've actually met her. So what'd you do to embarrass yourself? I don't know. You're not capable of being in a room and not embarrassing. No, I think I was cool. I think I was cool. I think I was cool. Were you doing shots of Red Bull? No, I did not do shots of Red Bull. I had some diet. I said some Diet Coke. (laughs) There was a whole fancy fucking bar set up with like signature cocktails. The theme was a Piscean ball. There were fucking mermaids. Is she a Pisces? Is that okay? I I don't know. I I don't know anything about Pisces. There was a contortionist. There was a DJ. There was a dance floor. There was a person reading like your palms, like a what is what is that? A palm reader. A palm reader. There's a person doing uh, sketches of people. It was fucking awesome. There were bitches. Rich, rich. This is crazy. This is like better than my wedding. I'm never gonna have. (laughs) Dude, her housewarming party. I went to. I was like, damn, this is more lit than my wedding. And then she was like having this party, and it was like flooded, and my check engine lights on, and I was like, baby, I'm kind of scared. And then she posted a picture on her Instagram of Dakota Fanning and Al Fanning all fucked up and I was like guess we gotta go like this shit's about to be fucking sick Joe and I spent three hours at the mall I got two outfits couldn't pick one why didn't you wear one of them here I will eventually but it's fucking raining oh. and also we need to go to Vegas we, we can use my Southwest points and go to Vegas okay he says okay on the pod but uh, when I was texting <laughs> him this bitch was like silent <laughs> no I, I replied to you i would go to vegas shane's been thinking about it for his podcast too maybe we can um, just do like a, a week duel? long yeah i can't do a week in vegas okay well you can i would die go on your own okay can i take one of your cars because <laughs> my <laughs> prius is done <laughs> <laughs> i'll drive the gear down in the tussie okay for real okay could be fun could be fun i think it would be really fun I'm I love Vegas I'm not denying that it is so, like I was watching a Tana Mojo vlog this morning and there's some hot tips in it she's like when you get here don't take the Uber don't take the whatever go to the fucking limo line you can find one for $80 and it'll take you right to the strip and I was like a limo yeah wow and it's cheaper wow yeah that is a hot tip so I was thinking like wow that would be so fucking fun you and I in a limo just or uh, fucking all of us well yeah no we could do that for the fam sure. today's podcast is sponsored by hello fresh and with the cost of groceries going up and up now is the perfect time to get started hello fresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25 percent less expensive than takeout hello fresh has 40 weekly recipes to choose from for all meal occasions lifestyles and preferences you can take your pick from meals like soy glazed salmon with rice or mushroom and chive risotto the best part is there's no lines there's no hassle it's just great tasting meals you can whip up and enjoy from the comfort of your own home. You can even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides and even add protein to a veggie dish. I love the comfort of knowing I have HelloFresh waiting for me in my kitchen, especially on those busy work weeks. It eliminates that hour long debate of what I'm gonna have for dinner and deciding if I have all of the ingredients. And I know that it's always going to taste delicious and be healthy for my body. So if you wanna try HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com 
Amazon.com slash thesip60 and use code thesip60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash thesip60 and use code thesip60 for 60% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Um, You wrote you're getting your cards replaced as a nightmare, but like we all know that. No, it's it's a bigger fucking nightmare to get your credit cards and your whatever cards replaced at Bank of America more so now than fucking ever because apparently people were fraudulently going in and and stealing people's bank information with like fake IDs or whatever to get the temporary cards. And I rely on those temporary cards as a dumb bitch who throws her wallet away like twice a year. <laughs> and because if, if, I, if I throw that away, I need I can't not have access to my money. Right. You know, what I, that's crazy <laughs> for however many days it takes to get your cards. They yeah. still haven't sent my business card and it's been over a week. So anyway, I go in to get my temporary card. They go, oh, we don't do that anymore. I go, OK, well, how do I I can't just cancel my cards and have no access to money. Did you deposit a shitload of cash? Is cash falling out of your pockets? No, because also, like, I'm going to lose that. You know, I can't walk around with cash. I throw my fucking wallet away. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, well, I guess we'll replace one card and then we'll replace the other. And the one that I didn't need actually, like, because I, so I keep my personal card uh, turned on and they just get a replacement so I can keep using it on my phone. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I canceled my business card and asked for it to be sent to my house. The fucking card that I don't actually need gets sent to my house and I still don't have the business card. So I can't cancel this card because I still won't have another card. And are you checking to see if people are spending on it? I am. They're not. Okay. I definitely threw my wallet away. I, would, I threw my passports away once upon a time, so I get yeah, it. Yeah, can't find my passport. And my now wallet <laughs> is the, definitely the number one thing I lose daily. Yeah, but I am going to return the wallet I got for Joe and get a girly version of it. Okay. For me. I like that. I do too. I thought about just using the one I got and I was like, this is so masculine. It looks like it wasn't for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to choose who's going to be our parents if, uh, our, if something if were die. to happen to us before the babies are born oh wow that's because heavy. we're doing legal and so yeah. like before like they sent us the legal contract and now we're reviewing it and he's like a couple of things you got to answer like who's going to be the parents in the event that you both die before the kids are born what's so f joe and i were talking about this this weekend and it's like you always pick the person where you know if they died they wouldn't want you to have your kids because they're better <laughs> than you you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> like you always pick someone who's a little bit better than you to have your kids in case of your death but you know for a fact they'd never be like oh i don't want lizzie to have my baby <laughs> i have some suggestions for you do you need them or have you picked yeah you can give me your suggestions i do you want me to do it on air or privately no go on air for sure austin well that is kind of my first choice yeah austin you know? takes care of all of us I haven't asked him yet so stacy's gonna hear this first before Stacey, i ask austin. raise these babies dude <laughs> Raise these babies. Yeah. In worst case scenario for Shane and I's life. I mean, they're raising this baby right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like rude to put it on my parents. Like, they've already had enough kids. Like, my grandma lives with my mom. So, like, it would be too mean to, like, be like, here's a new baby. Right. Which it would I not think be nice to it. Austin. But, like, he's young. He has a house. He has a job. <laughs> oh, I, I, as a person who barely speaks to Austin, think he, I think he would love it. <laughs> 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 okay what's your last of us beef before we get into our hot toppies Have, are you caught up on the episodes i've fallen off the train i keep so, thinking we're gonna go back we're gonna go back but i haven't gone back and see so here's my maybe like not so popular opinion i don't really give a shit about this show i think i fell off too i i want to fuck the shit out of pedro pascal because everybody does <laughs> that came up at the party someone brought him up they're like he's so hot and i was like yeah everybody wants to fuck him and joe was like is that your way if you say you want to fuck him and i was like yeah i said everybody <laughs> are you listening what's his status in life pedro yeah like, no idea but i'm single married about straight it. gay it feels like he's looking for me <laughs> Honestly, that's what I think he's up to. I'm not going to look too much further into it because I like it as is. Um, so I'm watching because I care about him as a person. Uh -huh. Has it developed a lot more? Or is no, it like every there the is. Same? It's like it's all a stunted development because every episode the new development dies. Mm -hmm. And then well, they're thanks just for spoiling it for who me. Who fucking cares? I need, dude. never need to go back. You're never going back. Anyway. I'm never going back because it was something I was like, oh, Shane and I can watch this together. But then we're like, it's not the right thing to watch while you're eating dinner. And then uh, after dinner, it's like, I want to watch something like Housewives. Right. I mean, at any rate, I will say spoilers ahead. No, I don't want the spoilers. What if one Let day I go back? You're not going to go back and you're going to forget this conversation the second People we're done having it. People don't want the spoilers. I'm spoiling it because I have don't beef. Don't spoil it. I don't care. Okay. Can you spoil it without spoiling it? <laughs> 
Try your hardest. Okay, so here's my beef with it. Kay. This most recent episode, we go back to Elle's origin story. Is that the daughter? Yeah. Small girl? No. Yeah, it's, okay. it's the they, them. She's come out as a they, them? She's been a they, them. The whole time? Is it not great to say she's been a they, them? <laughs> they, they. They're a they, them. They're a they, them. We're learning. They're a they, them. Has they... Yeah, she, they talked were. about it. <laughs> I believe they have. Talked I'm not about trying it. to be mean. I'm not trying to like be really yeah, bad. It, it, I just I don't remember in the show that ever being. No, I'm talking about the person in real life. Oh, oh okay, okay, that's completely and, different from what I was. Well, thinking it's of. part of the character as well because they wear a chest binder. Okay. Anyway, this is her their origin story, and wait, in real life or the show? You're the confusing show, the fuck the out. The show, of the show. <laughs> okay. They're blended. Okay. Uh huh. Anyway. We're in a mall, right? And if we're looking at the timeline of this show, the outbreak happened in like 2000, 2001 or something, right? Okay. Which means that, and then in another episode, they say we're 22 years into this mess. Mm -hmm. So if this child is fucking 16 years old, she has never known normalcy of the world. Okay. And it's not like they have music because it's a bleak fucking existence, which they've established. They don't have TV. They don't have movies. She's basically like a sewer rat who has no parents also. So nobody has told them what the fuck life used to be like. Okay. This whole episode is these two kids who are 16 or 16 to 19 who have never been alive during a normal time period being in a mall feeling nostalgic listening to 80s music and playing arcade games. But like there's not a chance in fucking hell that a post-apocalyptic kid is going to run into a mall and be like... I fuck with Mortal Kombat heavy. You know what I mean? Like, they don't know. They don't know. They would, They like turn a carousel on, prepare it, and, and they really just like knowing exactly what the fuck a carousel does. But it's like, no one told you what the fuck a carousel was. How did you know to turn that on? You can't just suspend your reality for a second. Not this heavily. And then the other thing that's fucking irritating is like, it's got 80s nostalgia music playing, but it's like, if anything were to be playing in this mall, it would be whatever was playing on a loop in 2000. Right. Not the fucking 80s song that the writer is obsessed with because the writer came of age in the 80s <laughs> and the writer fucking played Mortal Kombat. Okay, now she's dragging the creators. And I love the creators. I listen to the creators podcast every day for five years of my fucking life. Really? Yeah, huge Craig Mazin fan, huge John August fan. And to be completely honest, Craig, I think you've sucked a little bit too hard on your own dick. <laughs> and I mean that with every fiber of my being, sir, respectfully. I love your work. You taught me most of the things I know. And you got to chill out a little bit, bro. <laughs> I'm shook. I know. It's a big... I mean, I'm tired. You know, I'm tired. I was up, Everything's fine was when up, you're tired. I was up late. I'm cranky. <laughs> I slipped in piss. I'm like not... You know, it's, it is what it is. So we're allowed to be nasty. I did an improv show with Jason Alexander last night. Who's so I'm that? like a big deal. The guy who broke into Britney's house at her wedding. Just kidding. It's the guy from Seinfeld. Wait, what? I, the, what? You wouldn't know any of these things, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, I hope they did. They will. <laughs> you were with a criminal last night? No. You know what I'm talking about, right, Chris? Chris knows. Well, uh, he, okay, moving on. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into some hot topics. <laughs> this headline made me cackle out loud because it was just a hyperlink, so I couldn't see it. Lizzie had put it in the document. I click on it, and it's like criminal how hard I was laughing at just the headline. Read the headline, baby. <laughs> Alaska woman gets kicked in head by a moose while walking her dog. But it was just like the headline with the bold text and then the photo right below it that just like sent me out of this atmosphere because it was like, what the fuck? So what's what I think is particularly funny about this is I, the first place I saw it was on TikTok. Of course. Because it, it was this family is in their truck and they're driving down the street at night in Alaska. And of course, she's just happens to be recording like, no she pulled out her phone to record because there's just a moose who's walking down the so street So instead of like honking like a fucking wait, crazy wait, person yeah. and saying like watch out there's a moose she's like no you're loose is on the loose literally that's what she's doing and one of her kids is in the back seat and goes yo shouldn't we give that woman walking a heads up she's like no, and I'm then post this and then TikTok. literally go viral this is the walker and this is the moose and the woman goes look out <laughs> hey look out after the kid's like, yo, should we give her a heads up? She's like, yes, 
Look out! <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to me when these people that record these things become the hero of their own stories when they're like exploiting somebody to go viral on social media. I don't think she was trying to go viral on it. I don't think she was connecting the dots that this moose that was running full steam ahead <laughs> just, at this woman. No, I'm, I, I don't know. When your first instinct is to pull out and gently record instead of being like, hey, bitch, watch the fuck out. It seems like yeah. you have an intention to post. Like yeah. I had also seen this story on like Inside Edition where like this 80 year old woman was working as a pizza delivery lady yeah and she like got to the store or got to this person's door the nest camera caught it she like fell and really biffed it hard yeah i saw that uh <laughs> <laughs> this poor woman's like fucking 75 and works for Domino's, and she just eats shit so hard <laughs> We're going to get in trouble for this. Laugh. No, because they started. It all turned out fine. They started a GoFundMe for her and they raised like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thank God. Quit your job. In, Anna. And they let her quit her job and retire. So all was good in the end. And she wasn't like hurt in any crazy yeah. way. That's I just think gonna it's going to be funny. the end of my story. I'll be 75 delivering a pizza. I'll eat shit. And whatever crowdfunding is available at the time will help me into retirement. <laughs> but it just felt like even that, then the family that posted the nest footage, like recorded them being like giving her the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh. And it just like gives me the ick a little bit. Cause it's like, it like, are you doing this for attention or are you doing it to actually help change this woman's life? In this scenario, I could see the update being valuable to those who contributed and loved this woman. I, yes. I do agree but in other instances like I see people all the time like go like their only acclaim to social media fame is them giving huge tips to people but that's not their own money they raise these money on crowdfunding sites themselves to go tip strangers right and that's how they get a following so it's like that that you know sure it's icky but it's still great for that server yeah yeah but then there's also the dark side of this where there a few years ago, there was like a homeless man who this couple raised like $400,000 for and they just never gave it to him. What? They just fucked him. And they're the like, and well, ran. he probably isn't going to have the means I, yeah. to see it. I think they did get in trouble mm. legally because it's fraud. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to this moose thing. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. I don't know anything about mooses. Meese. Meese. <laughs> but this moose was just jaunting along and then just whacks the person with one arm and then keeps running. Oh, straight like, up decks a bitch in the head. Like, wouldn't you think... Like, oh! My biggest fear is getting attacked by a mountain lion and they, like, attack me. And then yeah. they're, like, eating me from the inside out. Right. And it's, like, a prolonged event. Right. Whereas the moose was just, like... Yeah. Keep it moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which reminds me, you deleted my Jake Paul fight. No, I moved it because you put it two places on the document. Oh, my bad. <laughs> but that moose was throwing fists like Jake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jake likes to lean back a little bit, get real fucking far back, and then he just throws a haymaker. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably laughing all the way to the bank. How much do you think he made for that fight? I know nothing I don't know about his fighting. I, I think you still win money. Oh, good. Good. Well, if it's like a pay per view thing, he's yeah. getting paid X amount to show up. I don't know if it goes. I think up he if produced the not. fight too. Wow. Did you didn't watch it? No. What? I, I watched it. <laughs> you did? Yeah. You were with people that wanted to watch it. You I, didn't I wanted it on to watch yourself. it. You wanted to watch grown men fight? Yo, here's another unpopular opinion on this episode of Let's Cancel Lizzie Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep adding him up. Tally them in the comment section. I'm like, I'm and at this point, I don't even care to cut shit out. I'm just like, let her go. My back hurts. So <laughs> I'm just going to let things happen. So I think the Paul brothers are like super inspiring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how bad that sounds. I mean, the, I the know, way that like they were able to... It's like a toxic thing to say. The way that they were able to turn like a good YouTube presence yeah. into like mainstream all every dude in yeah. america like jizzing over you also is like pretty incredible the fa like as a person who who lightly vlogs once a week <laughs> and can't believe how much effort it takes and i put like no effort into it do you know what i'm saying yeah like i will my vlogs at most, I would six say, hour endeavors. This isn't a good like sell for your vlog <laughs> channel right now. No, but it's like that's all I can put into it. Right. You know what I mean? And they did it every fucking day at a very high energy level. Edited and very well. Edited very well. And on top of that, 
you see these boys and it's like they're that that's a version of acting they're playing yeah. to their audience in that and it is a fucking demoralizing character to play <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that is awful that must have been psychologically really fucking hard to, yeah and then not only that but they had the tenacity to capitalize on other influencers and take coin from them as well <laughs> like Oh my God. But more than any of this, I'm not like, this isn't even why I think they're inspired. Sure. It's low key evil what they do. <laughs> what I am inspired by is like, I heard Logan talking, I think on Jeff FM about his like work ethic. And he's like talking to Jeff and he's like, Jeff, but if you know your brand, man, you got to lean into your brand. And it's not just about your brand right now. It's like, what can you grow it to be? This is your job. Do your fucking job to the best of your ability and imagine what you could have by from doing that. If only I could take that on advice on this podcast. I mean, I take that advice in like other aspects of my life. Yeah. But, yeah. And it's like, it's just the way that they like rise and grind is fucking impressive. The work ethic is very impressive. Yeah. I mean, they're up working out all day, every day. They're working yeah. all day, every day. And it's like, damn. Sure. They take time off to have some pill addiction issues, but like, who doesn't, <laughs> you know? No, I just mean like a few of the things that like, even the name of their fucking company is like rise and be original. I think about that sometimes and I'm like, yeah, I I will do that. I am original. I am. There's nobody who's as stupid as I am. Right. You know what I mean? I can lean into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna name my daughter Maverick. You know what I mean? I yeah. I'll stop. <laughs> but I was watching the fight, thinking like he's leaning back a lot. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I had a good time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love like your l admiration, love for them, but then like harsh critique at the same time. It's really great. Yeah. Okay. So Addison <laughs> Ray is set to star in a new horror movie, Thanksgiving opposite Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. A group of survivors fighting zombie like creatures and an action thriller about a stuntman targeting victims with his killing machine car. No, you mixed up two different movies there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is uh, the stunt car thing that you were just talking mm -hmm. about is actually from a movie called Grindhouse. That inspired this movie? Right. So Grindhouse. It's very confusing. I got very bored. I'm trying to explain it okay. to you. So in Grindhouse, there were a bunch of different like, um, what are they called? Movie trailers that were created for fake movies. Okay. And this is one of them. Oh. And, they're ma and Eli Roth is making it. And does he make other popular horror movies? Yes, he does. He def yes, he okay. makes. Some, he, yeah. Give me, give me one. Hit me with one. Uh, hostile. And never heard of it. Okay, <laughs> everyone else has. <laughs> good for Addison Ray. I mean, honestly, good. I can't hate a hustle, and this girl has really made something of herself. She do be hustling. I don't think she's. I don't have a big heart for her. <laughs> I know I, 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 I as a person who just stood here defending the Paul brothers <laughs> I feel I have I it, it weighs heavy on my conscience what this woman's had to deal with in regards to her like family siphoning off the fame like her dad and her mom are kind of like fame's an ugly thing and money's yeah. an ugly thing as well yeah I find it inspiring personally because like myself, be, me being me, yeah. like not the greatest actor in the world, this gives right. me hope. Like oh. after her Netflix movie <laughs> debuted at number one, Netflix then signed a deal with her for her to produce and star in two more Netflix films. Does she want to make our Christmas movie? Uh, hopefully. Wow. She could, we, she she could play me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you'd I'll be play really, my mom. No, you'd be really good at the producer role. Fuck you. <laughs> She's in two scenes and has three lines. <laughs> Make our dreams come true. Addison, baby, go red. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think good on her, you know? Yeah. Good for her. Is she still TikToking? I don't know. I had to delete the TikTok app. <gasps> I know. What? Well, I was trying to edit my vlog this weekend and I had filmed a majority of it, all of it, on my phone and was trying to transfer the footage from my phone to my computer and it wouldn't do it because it wouldn't download from the cloud because my phone was full. So I was like, you know what? TikTok is toxic. I'm going to delete it. And then last night before bed, I downloaded it again like a fucking crackhead. <laughs> like, I need it's this. like me in my 20s when I was addicted to Grindr. I kept saying goodbye and I kept yeah. coming back. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Wow. Yeah. It's All right. back though. 
Uh, Lady Gaga gets sued for not giving $500,000 reward to Dog Thief. Yeah, can you believe that? No, I actually can't. And the more that I would spiral down into this story, it's crazy. Uh, this lady... Let, let's give the backstory first. For those of you that have forgotten, a few years ago, Lady Gaga's dog walker was walking her three French bulldogs when he was shot in the fucking chest multiple times and the dogs were kidnapped. Mm -hmm. So he survived. And I think he was able to hold on to one of the dogs too, actually, which is like fucking wild. So they jack these two French, French bulldogs. This guy's in the hospital recovering. Lady Gaga says, I will give no questions asked $500,000 to any person who, who returns. returns these dogs to me or helps aids in the return of my dogs. Mm -hmm. And this bitch comes out of the woodworks and she's like, so funny, I found these dogs. Which is crazy because I wasn't following... Like, it was so long ago that I had to, like, reread. And from what I gathered this morning, it's this woman was friends with the guy that stole the dogs, knew he stole the dogs, and went and stole the dogs from him to then give back to Lady Gaga. But then she was... It turned around that she was then an accomplice in stealing the dogs in the first place. But her giving them back, she was like, because there's no questions asked, I was supposed to get the $500,000. Yeah, fuck you, bitch. I wonder, though, if in a court of law, she'll win? I don't know. Like, if Lady Gaga posted... I mean, it's so morally corrupt and fucking twisted in every way. Like, mm -hmm. the, the karma that this girl is going to face is going to be... Who knows? Near death. Yeah, I mean, I hope she chokes on her own spit and dies. <laughs> I mean that. Period. Yeah, you're a fucking asshole. You're a fucking asshole. You're going to steal someone's dogs, shoot someone in the chest, steal their fucking dogs. And what lawyer would take this on? A fucking you know? asshole. Like, a fucking yeah. asshole lawyer. Let's get Gaga. Yeah, who's this lawyer? I don't know. I hope this bitch is filing her own paperwork, too. So she has to go through that fucking hell as well. I wonder jail. if this will escalate to a point where, like, Lady Gaga will have to go to court. Or if she'll settle, which would be so... Like, can you imagine having to settle? I would somebody... never. I would never. Mm -hmm. I just don't know... You're going to have to pull that money from my fucking fingertips. And then also, I might shoot you in the chest. I just don't know from... <laughs> like, I don't know the law, obviously. Right. So I don't know from that standpoint, if her sign was, you get $500,000 for returning the dogs, no questions asked. Does that mean she gets $500,000? I don't know. It's not like a legally binding statement. She didn't, like, sign a contract with, like, whoever is returning the dogs. I mean, I don't know. I know that there's, like, I don't remember the actual, like, you know, case law about all of this. But there are there is a lot of history in it because there are police officers who will pose as a person buying drugs to get a drug dealer. So to some degree, this is similar to that. You right. could argue that. And no matter what, it's like, fuck you, dude. Also, stop stealing dogs. Stop it. What do you like? You think you're gonna make money breeding them? You're not. Also, These dogs don't have papers. You're not gonna make the same fucking coin off of them, and you're not gonna do it well. So all you're doing is ruining a fucking dog's life who's really happy with their family. But also, and ruining a family's life. Who's fucking stop? Who's gonna buy Lady Gaga's stolen dog? You know, I, like, well, sometimes I think it's more about breeding them. So they'll steal a dog so they can breed the dog. You don't there's a think lot of this person was targeting Lady Gaga because they're Lady Gaga's dogs? Honestly, no. I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the marketing ploy would be inside of that. Like, I've got I Lady Gaga's dog. Yeah. You can't market that. I don't think it had anything to do with Lady Gaga because stealing French Bulldogs is such a fucking problem. Right. It's like, it's such a problem that, like, we don't want Icky in the front of our house anymore looking out the windows. Mm. And like we took him for a walk on Christmas in Publix because he loves people like that was his Christmas present. <laughs> and we bumped into another woman. She's like, oh, I have a Frenchie, but I don't bring my Frenchie here. And we were like, I know. And she's like, stay strapped. Like, that's how we talk to each other. Wow. And it's I, when I walk the dogs, I walk them in my running shoes and I've trained them now like bubs. We're running. You know what I mean? Let's go. How fast can you go so that we can run if we have to? Like we <laughs> my husband and I like practice like, I have a plan. If I feel unsafe, I just start running. I don't give a fuck if I look yeah. stupid. I just start running. And then the other thing is, like, you know, we, we talked about, like, plans. Like, don't be embarrassed. Just start screaming bloody murder, knocking on all the doors. Because no matter what, like, I can't let them take my dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially because, like, he has, he has such a good life with us. And I love him so much. And I would rather, I, I mean, I would rather him be hit by a car than taken by someone who's just going to put him in a fucking cage and try to breed him. Yeah. And that's also something that's starting to stress me out about like the breeding websites that I look at because the one that I, I we got him from like we got him from a great family like there's literally inspirational quotes on the puppies walls 
And I swear to God, Icky is the sweetest boy because he came from a really sweet home where it's a family. They love these dogs. They love these puppies. They stay in touch with every family that gets one of their dogs. And um, I see on now these these websites that these dogs are going for like twenty three thousand dollars. And the ones that go for twenty three thousand dollars, I know like a bunch of people go in on buying it because it's an investment. And I know that dog Ugh. is just going to be used for breeding. That's so sick. And it yeah, it bums me the fuck out. And it's like. I mean, I don't know. It has to be. It's like there's so much compassion and love that has to go into the to life making specifically for like a puppy mm -hmm. or a dog because dogs are just the purest, sweetest, most loving. So it it really bums me out to see like a twenty three thousand dollar like fluffy Frenchie getting bought by like <laughs> five people who are posting pictures on Instagram with it getting ready to breed them when they're six months old. And there's no way to stop it. Like it's not illegal by any means. Um, that's no, and that's the thing that bums. So like the website I use, they do random check in on breeders' houses, so they won't feature you as a breeder on their page if you're, you know, shady. Right. But they don't really look at the buyers. Like I wanted to FaceTime with Icky's family so that I could know where he was coming from before I picked him up. And they didn't want to see us. They don't give a shit as long as your car is as long as your cash clears. Right. I mean, they give a shit because they stay in touch and we like text and send pictures on Instagram and all those things like they know his name, all these things. Right. But um, I don't know if they they met with every family. Right. You know, it's harder to rescue a dog from Wagmore than it was for me to buy Icky. Yeah. And I think to some degree that the price sort of weeds out some of the riffraff. But I also see like that demon, that demon Frenchie in New York is back up for adoption because the family that got him initially couldn't train him or take care of him. And then the woman who adopted him afterwards returned him. I don't know what that demon dog is. Oh, uh, there's a demon dog in New York. He's a really cute Frenchie. And I might go get him because he's been returned after being adopted again. Okay. Brian Cox slams Succession co-star Jeremy, Jeremy Strong's method acting. <laughs> it's annoying. This is so funny. I guess Jeremy Strong on the set of Succession, once he shows up to set, he stays in his character. He's like full-blown method acting. He's like all the way there the entire time. And Brian Cox is like, Jeremy's gifted, but he will not lose his talent by embodying his character off screen. He goes on to say he doesn't have to be a big fucking religious. It doesn't have to be a big fucking religious experience. <laughs> and then the reporter said, well, what's it like being around somebody who's always in character? And he said, oh, it's fucking annoying. Don't even get me going on it. <laughs> I love how brutally honest he is about it because it's like, it must be fucking annoying. It must be awful. I met Sally Field right after Lincoln and Daniel Day Lewis is famously a method actor. And like she and her son were all fucked up at this like after party for the Globes because she was on doing like the award circuit that year. And they were all wasted. And they're like, it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> I, the son's like, I would go see my mom and I had to call this fucking guy Mr. President. What the fuck? <laughs> it was the best night of my life. It was so sick. <laughs> I just, I mean, I got, I, it's a whole nother level. I know like Jim Carrey, like famously, did you ever watch the Andy Kaufman documentary on Netflix? Oh, I watched the documentary Car and I saw the movie when it came out and you know, I love it. Man on the Moon, he plays Andy Kaufman, and Andy Kaufman was like famously obnoxious. <laughs> like but Jim apparently while filming that movie like did not break character like there's footage of him like r crashing cars into like the studio sound stages yeah and he's like he he's saying like the character doesn't want Jim to come out and he's like just staying full blown there the entire time wild and now Jim even present day when he's like doing the like confessionals for this documentary that they made about him being a method actor for mm -hmm. that movie he's just like sitting there like yeah universe Universal didn't want any of this footage to get out because they thought everyone would think I'm an asshole, but I don't care. <laughs> I mean, they do now anyway. <laughs> everyone thinks he's an asshole? Yeah, Jim's had like a rough few years. I, I mean, think. he's so talented. He's recently like garnered a little bit of his like Hollywood love back, but there was like a period there where everyone was like, fuck him. But he's so talented. He's so talented. I mean, I don't know what he did. Other Like, was he just like generally kind of rude to people or just like mm. in his own lane, not like... I could be wrong, but I think it's pretty dark. Okay. Yeah. Because I do feel like there is a certain element of when somebody gets very successful, 
I understand an element of them wanting to do their job efficiently, which means not like stopping to talk and check in on everyone's feelings Mm -hmm. all the time. It's like, I'm here to do a job as much as I have a great job. That's fun and entertaining. Mm -hmm. I'm not like here to be everyone's emotional support or make you feel validated in your job role in this production. I can be polite and I don't have to have a conversation right now. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of these, huge actors get a lot of beef because like they like help the help or the subordinate workers amongst them will be asked to not speak to them which i understand it's i mean like, i get it too and you're, it's, if this is a big role for you if you're a big actor you're taking a movie because you think this is the right step for your career which mm-hmm. there's a lot of pressure on choosing a right role because hollywood's all about momentum if you lose momentum you won't get the roles you once had yeah. so it's like i'm preparing to do a huge fucking monologue i don't want all the crew members telling me they loved me in this movie or yeah. like bringing me away from or what honestly, i'm thinking about talking to me about anything yeah i'm, I'm i've got to focus i hate when joe comes in the room and i'm writing and he just says nothing to me. And I'm like, hey. He's like, oh, am I bothering you? It's like, yes. <laughs> yes, you are. I love you so much. I love you so much. <laughs> but yes, you are. <laughs> and see, and that's the person you love most. Yeah. So imagine a stranger. Like literally didn't want to come here today. I just wanted to cuddle with him and the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, it's like, don't don't talk to me. He's like, you never listen. It's like, you, why, why would I listen to you right now? You just interrupted me. <laughs> But um, I mean, I don't yeah. let either of you talk to me before this show. No, he literally. Yeah, oh my God, you say it. I don't. Yeah. You say and don't talk to me. It's not because I don't like you guys. I just don't want it yet. I mean. <laughs> Man, I just got so hot. So hot. Ding, I was going to say something I completely uh, forgot. Most recently was Austin Butler, obviously, who just like can't kick his character, which I think is in the long term going to affect his future roles because if he's like, giving me the ick. if casting directors can only see you as that even in your real life, it's like how am I going to cast Elvis, you know? Yeah, he's giving me the ick. All right. Well, <sighs> Paris Hilton's family didn't know about her son, who we now know is named Phoenix. Did we did we already talk about this on the podcast? Well, we talked about his name. We didn't talk about her recent... That was before she posted a photo with him. Right. And now she's revealed that none of her family even knew that she had a surrogate pregnant until a week after the child was born and yeah. in their lives. <laughs> Could you imagine keeping a secret like that? No, I tell everyone on the internet every step of my journey. I would die. I think because, I mean. I would internally combust. Uh, I couldn't talk to anyone. I would have to fake my own death. <laughs> like, because, like, honestly, if that's, and then it's like a double reveal. Surprise! <laughs> and a baby! This is like a trend now. I People under- are showing up at their family, like non-famous people are showing up at their family's houses with fucking babies in crates here's the and they'll do part. the whole announcement and then they'll be like and guess what here she is and, and then the parents of these parents are like what <laughs> okay the dark and twisted part of me is like do you think if paris even told any of her family members like well what if her mom said it to like one of her sisters and then her sisters said, and then it gets out and it leaks and mm-hmm. then her like big baby reveal is like I'm not saying that's what she did, but like Paris Hilton loves a good press moment. So yeah. like the toxic part of me is like, maybe she didn't tell her family for that reason, or maybe it's people protecting themselves from heartbreak because I think to like, if something didn't go right, or if you've let everyone in on your journey and then you also have to live the heartbreak with everyone mm-hmm. and have everyone coming at you with questions or sympathy. I think there is a large element of celebrity that probably just doesn't want to deal with that heartbreak publicly. And I, I totally get that. And I think about that sometimes, like if I'm if I'm going to continue to vlog through my fertility journey, mm-hmm. the most annoying part of it is my mom and Joe's mom watching these podcasts <laughs> and then discussing amongst themselves instead of calling and talking to me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're also more so just like you want the in-person attention rather than than them. Being I don't like- even want that, but I definitely don't want them talking amongst themselves as if this is the actual information. Do you know what I'm saying? But the but the Are you saying you're lying on the podcast? No, but I'm like I don't want my close family members to think that this is a form of communication with me. Right. Like you got to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. This is this is not a conversation. <laughs> You know, like this, you, you know what I mean? You just feel like sometimes they can watch you for an hour and be like, I know what's going on with Lizzie this oh, week. Oh, literally, they're like, well, I was going to call and then I watched your podcast and I just decided not to. And it's like, okay, that's fucking fine, bitch. 
But um, but more than anything, it's like I think about that. Like, what if I can't have a baby? And then I've put it all out there. But then I remember, like, you know, if there is anything to pain and suffering, it's that if my pain and suffering can be relatable to somebody else mm-hmm. who's in pain and suffering, and that alleviates a little bit of pain for both of us. I think that's a beautiful thing. And that But that's different from being a celebrity actor. It's like, a little more specific to our jobs and yeah. what we've chosen to do and how we've chosen to put ourselves out there. I think YouTubers uh, find people that watch them because they relate to their vulnerability or what they go through in their life, good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, as like YouTubers, it is a learning moment. Like when the worst things in my life have happened and I talk about it on YouTube, not only do I feel like I get support, I gain knowledge, mm-hmm. I get to let it out. And it's like this beautiful, even with like the cat thing, people mm-hmm. are like, you need another litter box. And I look into it. I'm like, I need another litter box, yeah. you know? And that's something surface level and silly, but I mean, for me, it's the necessity to do something instead of just wallow yeah and i think that that's i think that's good for everybody i think it can be good for everybody involved i think you can become toxic if you don't have the right like there's a boundary from expl- yeah. being exploitive exploitative of your own life and people and things in your life versus yeah. like sharing for a purpose or a reason or mm-hmm. a greater cause yeah yeah um, Hmm. Good on her for being able to keep that secret, though. I couldn't. Real sneaky. Bitch. I have to tell. Like, I we get every update with this journey for us, and I'm like calling my mom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's like, "Shut up! I heard it on the pod." <laughs> um, I think we should probably just get into advice, right? Advice, though. Yeah. You don't want. What was this? Um, you uh, already talked about that, and then the wedding thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> oh you don't want to talk about the wedding thing i mean you can if you want because i thought that was a great idea for right. a movie okay talk about i it. mean i'll hold it close to my chest but i thought it'd be a great concept for a contained film okay well let us in on the story no because then everyone else is gonna make the movie just, oh my gosh you're such a fucking tease <laughs> you know craig mason's listening right now <laughs> and you know he's like i wonder what lizzie's gonna make that movie about he's never casting you in anything or working with fine you. i don't want to be cast in his thing wow <laughs> i'm busy <laughs> vlogging (laughs) for five people who won't take my calls anymore it's fine let's get into some advice though ryland has titled this by girl in relationship with (laughs) you're not supposed to read my titles oh it's just so you know if you want to do it or not got it got it it, 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 it. hi ryland and lizzie hey girl hey i would really appreciate some advice on my relationship my boyfriend and i both 23 have been together for three years and i love him very much leave him stop it (laughs) (laughs) this is the healthiest relationship i've ever had and i can see us spending our lives together i'm bisexual but have never been in any sort of relationship with a woman and my only worry is that i will regret never exploring that side of myself and possibly end up resenting my boyfriend or our relationship i don't want to throw away something so special to me but it feels like i'm closing off a part of myself and all advice appreciated sending love to you all especially chris who's just the sweetest wow Aww. wow um i don't my personal feeling is uh i mean i don't know i'm not bi so i can't speak to the want to explore or having never explored regrets but i can say that if you are in for me a forever relationship means that there's no sexual stray, but mm-hmm. that's me, you know? I would say because you're 23, uh, it sucks because you're at a point in your life where this is a healthy relationship. You like him a lot. Everything's going well. The problem is I do fear like your concern of being maybe 50, having kids and then still feeling this strong urge to explore something you never got to do. I would say love has a weird way of working itself out. What's Mm -hmm. meant to be will be. I would be very honest with my boyfriend and I'd say, listen, I love you so much. This is the healthiest relationship I've ever been in. I'm having these feelings. And see if you guys can come to some sort of something together on your own. Whether that's like, okay, let's take six months and reevaluate. Let's break up. 
let's explore. I mean, I couldn't do a third party in my relationship, no. but I'm just saying, I do think you're doing a disservice to yourself if you don't not only bring this up to him, but try for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're thinking about it enough to write us about it, yeah. it's something you're heavily considering or needing to do. I know that when I needed to hook up with a guy to kind of confirm why I felt off for so long, like questioning why I wasn't, like taking to the girls that were initially like throwing themselves at me. Like I could mm -hmm. tell, like you can tell when somebody's into you. And I like my best friends in high school would be like, what are you doing? Like, why aren't you executing this? This is like, like this girl's all into it. And I'm just like, I don't know. And for a long time I thought I was crazy. And then I hooked up with a guy and I was like, oh, everything mm -hmm. went off. And maybe if you are genuinely bi and you go both ways, you can find your your way back to him. But I just, I, I think you need to like be brutally honest with your partner and then come up with a plan for yourself. Yeah. To extrapolate on my whole, the love doesn't stray sexually thing. Like if you're thinking about something else or somebody else, that probably means that this, and, and just being healthy is not a reason to stay in a relationship. Yeah. You know, we we are in a day and age where we have the luxury of not just settling for healthy. Like you can have, you can have it all. You can have love, you can have health, you can have passion, you can have all of it. And, um, you know. Sometimes the perfect relationship on paper doesn't equal happiness. Exactly. You know? And so if you're not happy and lit on fire by this thing because you're thinking about something else so severely that it's distracting you. I would say pump the brakes on this. Also young as fuck. 23 Very is young, young as fuck. And that's what, I don't know, like if you were 30 and like engaged, yeah. I'd be like, I'd really consider and maybe like reach out to a therapist. Yeah. Um, but because you're so young, I uh, brutally honest conversation with him because this relationship yeah. is healthy. Yeah. And then figuring out your next steps, I think is ideal. Yeah. 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 <sighs> I think we did that one, right? Yeah. Did we do this one? No. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I'm currently planning my wedding. Both me and my fiance are in recovery. And I know Lizzie is in recovering is in recovery. So I need advice. I know I absolutely don't want liquor at my wedding. I think I'm okay with beer and wine, but I'm having second thoughts. I have read on wedding threads, though, that guests can get bored if there is no alcohol. Lizzie, did you have alcohol at your wedding? If you did, did you get triggered at all? If you didn't have alcohol at your wedding, did your guests still have a good time? I have three years sober and my fiance has four. Alcohol was not our drug of choice, but my mother-in-law is saying it'd be better to just not have alcohol altogether, but I don't want people to be bored. I honestly think me and my fiance will be fine if there is alcohol, but I guess I'd also just like to be prepared for anything in case anyone gets triggered. I look forward to hearing from y'all and love the podcast. Um, it's your wedding. Don't have alcohol. If you don't want alcohol, if you're not happy to pay for the alcohol, fuck it. You have a DJ there. They can dance if they're bored. I agree. And I think if it's a concern of yours at all, you should just nip it in the bud. I mean, obviously, I'm a big um, cheerleader of your wedding is your day. Like, yeah. I didn't... I, not that I didn't consider those closest to me, but I wanted it to be about Shane and I's relationship, how, what felt most authentic to Shane and I. Mm -hmm. And the wedding's supposed to be the best day or one of the huge milestones in your life. If you think there's a chance that you could be triggered by a substance at your wedding, I just think it's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it. And it's, if, and it's money, dude. It's expensive. And if you have guests that are like, oh, I'm not going to come because there's no alcohol or that's going to be boring. They're not your real friends to begin yeah. with. Like if you would have told me there's no alcohol at my wedding, I would have been like, great, who cares? Uh, there was alcohol at my wedding and like, to be honest, like I wish there wasn't. I get a little bit annoyed around people who are drinking. It's just, not, it's like, and it's not even because I have an alcohol problem. It's because it's annoying. Well, and I don't think, like, I don't think Being you around mind, a blackout drunk person yes, is like, really fucking annoying. You don't mind annoying. if I have a glass of wine. No. It's when somebody is like, and a lot of people at weddings do get to the point of blackout. Yeah, people it's, get wasted it's at weddings. It's not casual drinking at a no. wedding it's not like we're going to dinner and i'm having a glass of wine no. it's like i'm having five cocktails i'm puking in the bushes yeah. i'm gonna fuck my girlfriend in the bathroom like my twisted cousin brought coke and we're all blown out like 
It's not, it's annoying. It's fucking annoying. And if you're worried about people being bored, instead of spending the alcohol, the budget on alcohol, why don't you spend that money on like carnival games yeah. or experiences poker that people table. can engage in? Yes, because it's yeah. like you can, that's a lot of money you're saving on alcohol. Yeah. You can hire experiences or games or anything fun. I don't think I would work to please anyone else, especially if you guys are going strong with three and four years of recovery. Yeah, and it, it's not even about triggering your ism. It's just your day. Yeah. And if you don't want it, you don't have to have it. I agree. Don't spend all this time to then have all this drama. And especially when you're bringing and all these family members together, mm -hmm. like the alcohol only like really expedites the amount of possibilities for fights or arguments or riffs. Yeah. And like for me, it's like, I want to remember this day. Mm -hmm. I want to remember it with my friends. I don't want my friends to be like, oh my God, I totally forgot I did the senior wedding or like. I'm, I was up all night drinking and forgot. Like, are you are you cool with me doing it? It's like, no, I'm not cool with any of it. If you have to ask, you know I'm not. Right. Don't do it. I say stand strong in stand it, Stand strong. Just yeah. don't do it. And, it's your day. And live for yourself. And They're probably your already husband. married. This has been on here for a while. Oh, sorry, girlfriend. I hope you didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're the worst. <laughs> we are the worst. Um, all right, you guys. Well, I guess submit your new advice questions so we can be timely. Uh, contact the sip at gmail.com. There's also a phone number I will leave in the descriptions, uh, description section and pin it in the comments. Uh, try to leave them under 30 seconds. Get straight to the point just so that we can actually share them on air. Um, and yeah. 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 It's your life. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Yeah. Except for pay taxes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Uh, follow everyone on social media. Lizzie has a vlog channel where she posts every single Tuesday. And we will see you next week right back here on The Sip. All right. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's The, the Sip. sip. <sighs> My Sean Mendes vlog goes up tomorrow. Everybody watch that. Yeah. Do you see him? Are you going to explain? I went him like hiking that? with Sean Mendez. Is that your title? You cannot explain. I him. went hiking with Sean Mendez. He's in the him. video. And now he's spotted at Runyon Canyon with his masseuse. What a fucking idiot. Come back to Fryman, baby. We miss you. Bye.